Anthony James here, founder and CEO of linuxacademy.com and cloudassessments.com. And thanks for waiting and welcome to live show number three. And today what we're going to do is we're going to have two guests. Again, it seems like we've been doing two guests and we probably will be doing two guests for quite a while, maybe three or four. And today we're joined by Thomas and Craig. And Thomas is our head of AWS content who was just promoted in that position uh, in uh, January 1st. And Craig is a course author who's been with us for how long have you been with us, Craig? Since June 30th. It's hard to believe. Since June 30th. So yeah, we're going to be coming up on that year here pretty quick. And so today we're super excited to announce yet another course. And that's going to be our third course for this week. And uh, so just to do a quick recap as we continue on. On Monday, we did a live stream around the office to show our Dallas-Fort Worth headquarters where we have 50 to 52 of our staff in person here. And the rest of our 90 plus staff is actually remote, full-time uh, full staff. On Tuesday, we announced with Matt, course author Matt, our Google Security Essentials or Google Cloud Security Essentials, all available on Linux Academy now. And then yesterday, we announced our Google App Engine Deep Dive, which is also available on Linux Academy. And today, we are announcing an AWS course. Now, some of you might already know, so don't spoil it inside the chat if that's okay. But real quick, if you want to take the opportunity or take a moment to follow us on Twitter, that is twitter.com slash linuxacademycom. And you can follow me on Twitter as well. I don't know if that's going to be of any interest at all, but it's twitter.com slash anthonydjames. And the same thing for our, or for my LinkedIn. It's linkedin.com slash n. We got a little n in there. Anthony D. James. And you can always do a search for me. And it's really great to see how many people we've connected with. I've connected with over 200 people this week. Very, very exciting. Love connecting, sharing student success and everything else that we have going. So real quick, I'm gonna introduce the two guys I got here with me today. We're gonna to start off with the one who's directly right on my screen, or we will, we'll go to Tom. We'll start off with Tom. Tom, tell us a little bit about yourself and say hello. And for context real quick, Tom is the guy who came up with Orion Papers. Anthony D. James, and you can always uh -oh. do a search for me, and it's really great. <laughs> um, hey everybody, how's it going? Super excited to be here today with uh, Craig R. Curie, one of our AWS course authors to announce um, what is going to be our first release for AWS content this quarter. Um, so I've been with Linux Academy now for almost two years, and it has been a great ride here being a part of the growth of this company. I think I was the 14th employee when I started, and now we're well up over 90. I've been working on AWS courses ever since, and as Anthony just mentioned, um, you know, for the, uh, for the AWS Essentials course and for the CSA course, I really worked hard to develop things oh. that were new and innovative in terms of interactive teaching and learning. And Somebody things really like the Orion Papers and Project Omega um, you know, are now being deployed out to other courses across the, um, across the company. So we're excited to bring that type of new interactive visual learning to all of our students here. Fantastic, Thomas, thanks for that intro. And next we're joined with Course author Craig, tell us a little bit about you yourself. Hey folks, this is Craig R. Curie. I've worked in IT for over 20 years. I spent a lot of the last decade as a technical project manager. And I started working with AWS as a technical project manager. And I was just blown away by AWS. I loved it. And I couldn't get enough of it. Found out about the certifications and I started getting some certifications and I ended up here at Linux Academy which was a great move for myself and it's coming up upon as Anthony said a year that I've been here just a couple months away hard to believe time flies when you're having fun and I've been having a great time creating courses oh and we're super glad to have you actually really super excited to talk about the content that's going to be released today and real quick Tom uh, it's, are you, are you looking for more AWS course authors by any chance? Um, absolutely. So one of the things that we really like to do here is one is hire out of our student community. I was actually a student here at Linux Academy over two years ago before I came on to be a course author. Um, so anybody that's out there currently that is looking for a job potentially to be a course author, you could certainly go to our site 
And down at the bottom is a link for careers. You can go and check out all of the various uh, positions that we have open, including AWS course authors. So feel free to submit your resume as we're, we're looking to build our team. Awesome, awesome. And if, if you are interested in that, you can go to linuxacademy.workable.com or just linuxacademy.com on the very bottom and click on the uh, careers or about page and it'll take you there. And real quick, I want to give some props, Davis is who's, who's managing some stuff here, uh, to our live streaming team. After the first live stream on Tuesday, I now have a uh, team who is managing the live streams and I think uh, they're getting better as we go on. So real quick, Davis, if you don't mind, maybe turning the camera and uh, showing the team. Let's give a big thank you to Ingrid and Winnie who are here assisting. And we have Joelle who is assisting and watching remotely. And then we also have, of course, Davis who is managing the camera. I don't know if you saw him, but he did a little wave here. Davis can come over here and show himself. Davis is actually, for those of you who see some of our awesome videos, uh, our April Fool's video is one of the best videos I've ever seen. It's super cool. <laughs> Uh, Davis actually makes those videos. He made the intro video as well. So he does a super awesome job at that and we really appreciate it. So what we're going to do is we're going to just get it over with and then have some QA and talk and, uh, you know, demo some practice exams and every other thing that we got going on. So first, let's go ahead and announce. Uh, do you want to do it, Craig? Oh, there it is. So Craig, we are announcing the AWS IM Identity and Access Management Deep Dive. So Craig, if you don't mind, just tell us a little bit about this course. All right. Well, first of all, folks, welcome to the Identity and Access Management Deep Dive. And I think that might be the last time I ever say that. But anyway, this course, I'm very excited about it. Worked a lot with Tom, and uh, we we integrated the Orion style, pay, sort of not the exact same, but same concept, split screen, and as you know, Anthony, there, there's some difficulties with presenting IAM in a lab environment. And what we did was we set up a, a, a scenario where the, the student could set up an entire company in IAM. So I think the great advantage of that is that some, if I picture it as if a, if a student is on a job interview, and, you know, they can just go, that's one thing they can present is, hey, I know how to set up I am for a company and go into the details of that. And the details of that include, you know, you start with an I am account, you start as the root user. And it's not best practice to remain using that root account. So you set up an administrator and you prepare to lock away that root account. So we, we've come up with this company called I Am Secure Corporation. And the, the, the scenario is that you're hired as an architect for this company. And you have to configure I Am for this company. So you first, first of all, again, you lock away the root account. You set up employee accounts. You set up groups. Place users in those groups. Well, they have no permissions yet. So then you start setting up policies, identity-based policies, resource-based policies. So you configure the permissions for this whole company. And once that's completed, what was re really cool lesson in, in the course is configuring multi-factor authentication for users and also setting it up so that it forces multi-factor authentication. So again, we got into policies, every kind of policy you can imagine. Cross-account access, dialing access to the billing console, setting up IM roles, launching EC2 instances with roles. And we got into a, a lot of CLI command line interface as well. And again, the overall goal was for the student to be able to say, hey, I can create I am for a whole company. Now, yeah. as an added bonus, in any of your certification courses, you're gonna you're going to have I am questions. 
the student will crush I am I am questions after having gone through this course. Yeah, I'm, you know, certainly at a lot of the certification courses, I am is, uh, you know, could be a big factor. And it's something that at least in the, in the certification courses may not go into too deeply. So here in this course, it really is going to provide us the opportunity to really drill down into the nitty gritty of IAM. And as Craig was just saying, the, the whole course is, is presented in a way where, you know, we, we put you in the position of you are just hired on by a company, a small company migrating to the AWS cloud. As part of that, you need to configure IAM for, uh, I think it's about 20 employees. So we yep. walk through the full process of, of, of building building them as users, adding them to groups, putting security around them, and then each of the obviously each of the uh, twenty users are broken up into different teams. That each team gets different permissions, um, different access to, to uh, different AWS resources. So we go through basically a whole um, basically a whole scenario, a whole test of actually going in and building out a small company's IAM permissions in use uh, from start to finish to really give you a full hands on opportunity. To um, to see how you would set up IAM in a real world, real company environment. So I think it's it's going to be a really awesome course. I really look forward to hearing everybody's feedback on it. Absolutely, and we're actually going to go through and demo some of it uh, real quick. And and also just so you know, we added for those of you watching, we did add our very first IAM hands on lab, which has traditionally been a little bit harder for us. Uh, but we 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 made some really cool strides in that, and it is available. I think it's actually in AWS. Uh, essentials and AWS concepts, or it's actually just an AWS essentials that we have that lab. It's introduction to IM. We can talk about that in the IM course. Uh, but the other thing is, is well, it was just that actually. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to show you some of this on the course syllabus that we have here from Craig. And then we're also going to demo a little bit of the practice exam system and uh, maybe answer a few questions inside of the community as well. So if you have questions for Craig or Tom or me, go ahead and start posting those inside of YouTube. And what we're gonna do is I'm going to have Winnie uh, let me know what those questions are, even if they're for Tom or Craig, and then I will ask Tom or Craig those questions and or Winnie will ask me a question and I'll answer it. And we'll go from there. So what we have is we have the AWS IM Identity and access management deep dive, which is super, super cool that we have this course. It's one of the highly requested courses. So Craig, you did a great job on that. See a lot of excitement in the YouTube chat channel right now. In fact, uh, if I go back up and oh my goodness, a bunch of questions just came through. So if I go back up, I forgot who it was. I was watching it. I'm yeah, gonna watch look them for all. the- uh, I'll go up here. I'm gonna, uh-oh, I'm live streaming myself there. Who was it? I'm looking for, here we go. We got Jeremy who says, this is great. I'll be bumping my IM deep dive up on training for right now, right now. <laughs> and uh, it's exactly what he's looking for. So we're, we're really excited to kind of see that excitement. Uh, we got some additional requests for stuff on there. And, and when it comes to content, what I love about it is you can never really stop, right? So I almost love it and I almost dislike it. If you think about it, we got to start somewhere, right? And then you got to say inside of a course, what is reasonable that we want to accomplish? What's the objective we want the student to accomplish? So with I am, we could go from an I am deep dive to I am deep dive to I am deep dive to I am deep dive. But I think what's going to end up happening is we're going to end up breaking those out a little bit, right? So if you look at it, you have a lot of Active Directory management, LDAP management inside of there. But with the number of AWS services that actually support that and the different mechanisms around it in and of itself that's actually a deep dive um, of which we could probably you know see a lot of stuff going in with there but so we looked at what was this deep dive meant to accomplish right uh, it, it's so much content and so we're really excited to see all that going and we're really excited to get move on with other stuff as well so um, and Tom you can look at some of the questions inside the community maybe address some of those but I'm gonna go ahead and demo Linux Academy and Oh, it's actually all on my screen, the YouTube thing, sweet. And so one thing I noticed on Craig's course is we had a lot of stuff in terms of the downloads. So there's a lot of detailed, even though we couldn't offer every scenario and, and a hands-on lab for IM, what Craig has done is he's done a great job providing everything that we've done so you could also do this in your AWS environment. And the real good news is, is that when you're learning IM, it doesn't actually cost a lot, you're not deploying resources that have high cost to it. Generally, IM doesn't have a cost to it. If you deploy an EC2 instance, you might incur a couple cents, depending on how many hours 
that you run it and the size of instance that you run. And so you could really take a look at this and Craig, you did an amazing job providing all of this as part of the course. So when you're going through this course, you're gonna really wanna take advantage of this download section. And let's just go ahead and do a, a quick overview of, of the course that we're looking at here. So we have an introduction, enterprise-wide account setup, accessing, managing users and groups. Then we have uh, so our cloud assessment stuff, which we'll demo here in a second. Working with IM policies, using policies to access resources, IM roles and advanced concepts, IM advanced concepts, IM best practices and troubleshooting, and then goes through the conclusion there. So, Winnie is holding, she's like holding up a computer to me, ask, asking, asking a question. So that, that's, that's where it was. And so, yeah, the question was about, uh, uh, was about uh, LDAP and IM. And that was something I was just talking about a little bit ago, is the course, the course, it, the course in and of itself uh, again, that topic is probably going to have its own deep dive uh, that, uh, and Tom, maybe you could speak to that a little bit, uh, but that topic will probably have its own deep dive just because the sheer nature and complexity of it and the different options that are there. You have, uh, I mean, four different services that can be tied into it. Uh, you have, uh, you know, labs from single sign-on, they're all over the place. How do you single sign-on here? Then you have an LDAP, you have Active Directory. Uh, so yeah, we will, in fact, end up touching on that. Uh, probably sometime this year, and she's doing it again. She's, she's doing it again. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, certainly, Anthony, uh, you know, to kind of touch on that, there's, there's so much with AWS. There's so many different services, and even within services, there's so many different types of configurations, third-party integrations, you know, and or integrations with other AWS services that I, I wish we could just cover it all. That's one of the reasons why we're actively hiring and growing the team right now, because we want to be able to provide more content, faster content, faster updated content to all of you, our students. So um, as much as we'd love to touch on everything that you guys are talking about in uh, the chat here, obviously we can't hit on everything in every course. Otherwise we would never release courses because we'd be, we'd be taking too much time working on them. So uh, with IAM, you know, we tried to really cover uh, the basics of IAM as a core service uh, in this particular deep dive. And in the future, you know, with things like Active Directory, um, things that are, are really popular in terms of integrating with AWS, we're certainly going to look to uh, touch on those in future courses. Hey, hey, Tom. So, how are are we are we utilizing? One of the questions was, are we utilizing? Um, actually, I'll just read the whole question because it's it's funny how she put it on there. I might have missed the intro, but is the Lucid Charts interactive program going to be used in this course? So there are, there are not any interactive diagrams in this course, there, uh, but every single lesson is split screen with a static diagram. And this is what we use throughout the entire, and you'll have access to all the diagrams in Lucidchart, but there wasn't necessarily a, um, a flow to the diagrams to make them interactive. It just didn't make sense in this context, um, but you'll have access to all the diagrams. You can click to each one on each particular lesson, but in each lesson there is a diagram of the workflow in terms of what we're setting up, and then um, the definitions down below of the steps that we're doing, why we're doing them, and best practices. But you will see the whole split screen view, so anything that we're doing on the left side in the console will be visually represented on the right side uh, in a diagram, uh, either architecturally or workflow diagram, with important facts and things that you need to know. So we had the next question that said, with the latest security beta exam, or was the latest security, uh, okay, here we go, let me reread re 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 it. With the latest security beta exam, is it taken into context while this IM deep dive was done? What, what I would say, and, I, and, and Tom, you can uh, uh, answer it as well, but what I would say is when we create content, um, we really go kind of objective-based learning, right? And so what you're looking at and what you're looking for is uh, the information in order to take and pass the AWS security exam. While some other places, they have a lot of different content as it relates and then they try to tie it together. When we build certification material, we look at what is it that the certification exam wants you to be able to do, right? We don't say, hey, how can we help the student just pass the exam and not be able to do it? We talked about this yesterday. We want you to be able to pass the exam, but what's more important is we want you to be able to utilize this and build these actual architectures. So we tie those two things together and we build a course completely associated with that. Uh, and so we're not really announcing some uh, necessarily everything in Q3 yet, but uh, 
Tom, what might be some of the plans or something that you can hint at for security or the security uh, expertise exam on AWS in terms of supporting that? So I will say that we will always put secure, um, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. We will always put certification courses first, top of the list in terms of priority. I'll leave it at that. Um, and you can make of that uh, what you may. And I'll add that we have been paying particularly close attention since they reannounced uh, all of the eight of they So they reannounced a couple certifications. They reannounced developer. Uh, I believe it was CSA that they just reannounced last month. And Tom, you can correct me if I'm wrong again. And then they just reannounced uh, security coming back as well. So uh, I will say that we monitor all of those things closely and all of our hiring and processes and actually platforms that we've been building even internally take into account how we want to be able to support any type of new announcement or change within any single 90 day period. That's our goal. It does take approximately 90 days to build a high quality hands-on course. If it was just an exam dump course where we're like, hey, we want you to pass an exam. This is what you have to know to pass an exam, but it doesn't actually train you to do it. That would take less time. But the way that we do our courses is we say, what is this exam really expect you to be able to do. And then we train you to the level at which the exam expects. We also provide those study guides and practice exams so you can pass the exam, but you can walk away from that knowing that when you pass that exam, that actually means you're qualified to run all of that in actual production level environments. You can go to a job interview and successfully pass that job interview uh, or go for that promotion. So we put a lot of time and detail into hands-on labs, into those Orion top, uh, interactive diagrams as well as practice exams. And we'll actually talk about that. Uh, all of our new content and certification content is actually gonna utilize our brand new practice exam and quizzing system. And I'm gonna bring it up over here. So you'll notice that all of our new courses take advantage of really our new platform cloud assessments. And so for example, I can look at any one of these. I think some of these might actually be, uh, let me click on uh, this one right here. And it's going to take me into cloud assessments where this is a actually hands-on lab. It's our introduction to AWS identity and access management where it will deploy out an AWS environment with some pre-built resources. And the objective is for you to accomplish certain tasks. And when you accomplish those certain tasks, I could actually bring those up a little bit here if you'd like. I'm going to start this particular activity. And, and when you accomplish those tasks, it will actually check mark off that you've successfully completed it. So one of the things that we've seen a lot of requests for our students is uh, this kind of greater engine. And so we've invested a lot of time and talent into building a real time greater engine, not only for our Linux stuff, which checks whether you've done those objectives, but also for our cloud learning environments, which has been the harder part. Um, and so all of our new hands-on learning activities, which are our labs, take advantage of this, and this one does as well. And so it does take a few minutes to load, and, and when you're doing this, you can actually watch the videos. We could take a look at an architectural diagram. All of our hands-on labs and learning activities now come with an architectural diagram, they come with videos, and these tasks that check off if you successfully completed what we want you to learn inside of the environment, which is really, really kind of a game changer, not found anywhere else. And then if obviously, you know, we want to make sure that these can load instantly, lots of research and development we have going on. But what we want to do is provide value. We're a training company, right? And so at the very least, if we're waiting for our environment to deploy, we want to give you what we call our while you wait cards. Our while you wait cards are meant to be, you know, little tidbits of information a factual information about the topics that you're learning. As you'll see here that AWS was founded in 2006, that card provided details. Alternatively, if you also wanna give us some of uh, information here, uh, I have the skill Amazon S3. What we can do is we can associate, well, I'm not gonna go into all the different details, but there's a reason that we do it. And then you'll notice that my learning activity is now available here. Now, what's really cool with this is this right here is what is going to, is, is what actually checks off when I'm done. And when you click on that question mark, it provides a hint on what we want you to actually do and accomplish. And if you watch the video, when you go through the video, there's three videos on this one. It takes you through, we go through architectural overview, we go through the actual walkthrough of working in the environment. 
And as you can tell, what will also happen, I click the open AWS console button. I'm going to type in the cloud user username, click sign in. And I now have access to a, an AWS environment. And if you notice, I've successfully opened up IAM here. So one of the things in this lab that I'm, I'm expected to do is actually successfully assign users to groups. And so if I go through and I actually assign those users to the proper groups, I built this lab so I actually know uh, how to do it relatively quick here. So as you can tell, uh, I'm going through and I'm learning these. I, I watch the videos, I'm going through the tasks that are expected of me and I, I, I'm working through it, right? And so what's really, really great is if I were to select grade and what will happen is this is gonna end up checking off over here as well. Uh, in about 30 seconds or so. Alternatively, what I could do is I can grade my activity if I actually did it how I was supposed to do it. I did it pretty quick. And then uh, it actually started checking off as I, hit, uh, as, I hit, as I hit grade, which is totally okay. And it goes through and it checks to make sure that we do all that we're looking for. And also I can rate this. We love student feedback. We love customer feedback. So either I think this challenge helped me learn something and it worked as intended, or I think this challenge needs some improvements. And obviously anytime you guys wanna downvote something, we love that feedback. The only thing I would ask is that we take everything you say personally and seriously. These go into real-time dashboards that Craig, Tom, and me all have access to. And so when you do it, you know, constructive criticism. Uh, we know that sometimes being behind a keyboard, we might uh, say not so nice things, but understand that our intention is to always do the best as humanly possible and go from there. So it shows that I've completed the learning activity. Ooh, she's holding up the computer again. <laughs> completed the learning activity and it was checking off as I complete, as I com as I move forward, but I didn't give it the opportunity to do so. And then the next thing that we have, actually I don't want to retake this. And then I'm going to go back to Linux Academy real quick. And let's take a practice exam. Let's go to here. And this is our new practice exam system. And one of the cool things about our new practice exam system is you guys can see that I tested this on 4.5 and I failed it. I just was, I was testing because it's brand new. And I can view my results here. But it's not popping up, but I'm gonna hit start challenge. And it's gonna, oh, there it was. It was a little slow, that's all right. So my, review, my results were popping up. And now I have my practice exam or my quiz in this case, it's not necessarily a practice exam, where I go through, it tells me it's a multiple answer. I'm gonna select it and go to next question. I'm going to select a single answer, but this one I'm not so sure about. I'm gonna mark it for review. I'm gonna go next question. And you'll see here in the question list that I have a flag that says I'm gonna come back to this. And you also see the number of minutes I should spend on each question, right? We want you to also, when you're taking exams and whatnot, to really kind of learn to gauge how long you should spend on a question in order to be able to get to all of the questions before the exam's over. The other side of that is learning at times to just say, mark for review and move on. Believe it or not, as you do that, you will actually come across other questions that help you answer the ones you don't know. I promise you, it happens all the time. So I'm gonna select some answers and go to next question. Next question. We go through, it comes back to my one I marked for review. I can mark one to many for review. I'm gonna select finish. It's gonna go through our grading process. It's going to say I had a pretty good start, but not that great. And you can see that I have all of the feedback associated with it. I can upvote or downvote uh, on this. And again, this is, uh, this is a way that we get instant feedback from our students, right? We love feedback. You don't understand how much we love feedback. And all of our content, all of our processes take into account all of the feedback that comes in. And I can go back, I can move on to a next challenge. Alternatively, I can take the challenge again or head back over into Linux Academy and pick up where I left off. And it, you can see here that I completed this lab here but it's not necessarily letting me mark off that I completed the policies because I didn't successfully complete the quiz. All right, woo, that was a lot of stuff. So Tom, Craig, how are you guys feeling over there? Awesome. 
Yeah, I mean, we we're super excited for everything that we produced last quarter and going to be releasing this uh, this coming month for AWS. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all several more times throughout the next uh, few weeks for a lot more AWS stuff. It's it's really exciting. So people are asking questions to things I'm not ready to announce yet, <laughs> which is good, which is super good. Uh, I don't know how to answer it without answering it. What, uh, which question are we looking at here? Uh, it was the, can you provide Google Labs inside of cloud assessments? Question. We can do lots of things. If you can think it, I would, I, here's what I would, here's, here's what I'll say. If you can think it and have seen it posted and if it makes sense that it would exist there, then the answer is probably we're working on it, we're gonna get to it, or we really wanna be able to do it. That's content, that's features, that's all of that stuff. We've been building over the past 12 months uh, and in 90 plus person company, we have over 25 engineers on staff. Um, we got a lot going on. So just Tom, tell us, uh, yeah, let's actually show some of the, uh, some of the new uh, course authors that we've hired. Uh, so we have a 26 person course author team. As you can see here, we have five people coming in for onboarding over the next couple of weeks, which is so excited. Two of them, or actually we have three or two new Azure people starting. And we just had what, three new AWS course authors. Tom, how big is your team right now? Uh, it's currently seven, including me. Uh, we recently just doubled it. It was uh, uh, myself and three course authors. It's now myself and six course authors. And we are looking to hire several more this quarter as well. So we're going to go from a team of uh, three to four up to a team of 10 plus. And uh, that will just give us the ability to make, uh, uh, make more content, better quality content, better updated content across the board. So it's something that, that we're really excited for. Um, so a lot of the things that you guys are asking for, we hope to be able to get to that stuff. Um, uh, you know, in addition to keeping up with all the various certifications, uh, now that AWS, once the security gets released, it will be nine, including the cloud, uh, the uh, practitioner course as well. So, uh, like I said, our first priority is always to keep the certifications up to core, up to par and up to date. And then after that, uh, all the various deep dives and uh, individual type services and topics that we can get to. Kieran, hi to you. How are you doing? <laughs> How are you doing? How are you doing? Um, I feel like this is gonna be another meme of me that shows up inside of our staff Slack where everybody's making fun of me. What's the best introductory? Tom, I'm gonna ask you a question. This is, I came up yes. with this all on my own. Hey, Winnie, when you show those things, you gotta tell me who's asking that so we can give them a shout out. So I can't, I can't ask that question. All right, I'll ask it. We'll give the shout out afterwards. Cause we're gonna give away swag. Actually, you know what? Before I say that question that Tom, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to completely go all over the map here. We are giving away a Cloud Assessments hoodie this time around. Cloud Assessments hoodie. Uh, and you know what we're going to do is we're going to give it to whoever shares the external IM deep dive URL on Twitter or LinkedIn and says, congratulations, Craig on launching your IM course that you've worked so hard on. So one of the reasons we're live showing and showing you all this is as we celebrate in the community with our students passing certifications, we equally want to celebrate the hard work of our course authors and team that goes into building this. So, you know, celebrate with them, right? There's a lot of work. There's a lot of long hours that go into it, specifically in a growing company with new processes and new platforms. You know, they're learning as much on our new stuff as you are on new technologies. So just congratulate them. And if the first person I see do it, these are, I don't know what I'm doing there uh, to a, a camera. The first person I see do it, or the first couple, maybe we give away five. I don't know, something like that. We'll give away some hoodies. So if you don't mind doing that. And then question, Alexander Dew says, what's the best introductory course for AWS at Linux Academy? Thomas has All right. I, I can certainly handle that. So I, that depends on where you're coming in 
from in terms of general IT knowledge. So there is the AWS Concepts is about a one hour course and that is for the absolute beginner. I mean, that literally just defines the question of what is the cloud and what is AWS from a super, super high level. There's no nothing hands on in that course. It is strictly conceptual, meaning that we just want to introduce conceptually what cloud computing in AWS is. So that is something that if you're totally new to the cloud, you want to start with. Um, as that's just super basic, nothing hands-on, just getting the ideas of what Amazon is, what its function is, as well as cloud is into your head. So that then sets the, the groundwork for then which you can go into two different directions, either to AWS Essentials or to the AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner course. Now, both of those um, have very different purposes. The AWS Cloud Practitioner course and the certification that that is for by AWS is generally for people who are in non-IT roles, meaning that if you are a salesperson, an attorney, an accountant, um, working at a company that works in AWS, um, it teaches you just the, you know, again, just some higher level concepts of general knowledge, basically, um, more detail about what a, what specific AWS services are, what the purpose are, how to look at uh, in terms of cost analysis for AWS, what some of their procedures and policies are. So again, the AWS Cloud Practitioner course is not for somebody that wants to actually use AWS to build um, to build infrastructure architecture and, and uh, applications. Uh, again, the Cloud Practitioner course is for those uh, that are in non-IT roles that just really want to learn about what AWS is so they can talk to their colleagues uh, about AWS and have a good understanding of what's going on. The AWS Essentials course is for that person that is in the IT role that wants to get their first hands-on experience with AWS. So that is you know, below any of the certification courses for AWS, but it is uh, just it's about a seven, eight hour course to get you in and learning how to use the basics of AWS, um, such as from, from um, you know, uh, EC2, S3, um, a VPC uh, architecting highly available, setting up highly available fault tolerant architecture, just the very basics. So again, if you want to go onto the hands-on side of AWS, you want to go AWS Concepts to AWS Essentials. If you are a non-IT person, then you want to go from AWS Concepts to the Cloud Practitioner. Now, after you take the AWS Concepts and AWS Essentials course, if you're going on the hands-on route and want to get one of the AWS Associate Level certifications, you want to then go from AWS uh, Essentials to the Certified Solutions Architect Associate Level course, um, which is generally the first major certification that a lot of students get in AWS. However, after taking the AWS Essentials course, you could just go directly into the SysOps, Certified SysOps course or the Certified Developer course. So again, the purpose of the AWS Essentials course is to give you that base hands-on, which you can then use to go to any one of the three associate level um, uh, courses and examinations. So that would be my path. And if, if you're brand new to IT as well, you probably want to throw Linux Essentials in there as well if you don't have any Linux experience. Um, not that you need a whole lot of Linux experience for, the, um, for any one of the associate level courses, Although we do use Linux instances a lot throughout those courses, so to get that base knowledge in Linux if you don't have it, I think is really important. So I would take Linux Essentials kind of along with AWS Essentials uh, to build that foundation for yourself before you move into any of the associate and higher level AWS courses. Perfect, Tom. And so real quick, I'm going to answer a few questions in the community or inside of YouTube chat. And we have one from Timothy M that says, I know hands-on labs involve a lot of work to set up, but is there a way to have more and to go to a place to see what the next ones are going to be? So let me answer this. We have 578, something like that, give or take five or so. 578 currently publicly available hands-on labs that uh, uh, span across Azure, AWS, Linux, and OpenStack, and lots of DevOps. We also have our cloud service that you can follow along with. Alternatively, for more context, we're launching over 50 hands-on learning activities, which are our hands-on labs. That's part of our announcements. That includes part of our 70 this quarter. We've redesigned how we do them to be independently consumable. And what I mean by that is they're designed to teach you a concept, whether it's part of a course or not part of a course. So they're new pieces of content for us and a brand new method of us doing it. And we're launching over 50 of those 
all of which will most likely, give or take a few, include our live real-time greater engine. And if that answers your question. And then another one in here was from Matthew. I think, I think he's cheating there. Matthew Shaw, we're cheating on that one. That's for sure a plant. That's, uh, he says, Tom's AWS course is phenomenal starting point. Can't recommend enough. I'm not going to lie. Matt works for us. He now, does. I'm not even going to try now, to hide right, it. You're right. He does work for us, but, you know, but he's telling the truth. So, you know, <laughs> come on. But, yeah, I'm always going to tout my own courses. So. <laughs> we have another question. Can we have more of DevOps real-time scenario use cases? Get out of my head. Yes. Yes, you can. Yes. The, the answer to that is absolutely you can. And they're coming. Oh, and there's there's so much more coming. I mean, we're only in the day. Th we've only announced four things, and our seventy plus, I actually think, is around eighty plus. We've we've announced four. We got a, we got a long month to go. All right. So real quick, we're going to uh, touch base on some stuff uh, that AWS talked about yesterday. Some of those announcements, some security announcements. Real quick, uh, I would encourage you to. Join us, follow Linux Academy Com or Anthony D. James, and join us for the part two AWS security webinar. And in fact, in this one, I'm going to be talking about some automation around attacks in your AWS environment. It's something I've been personally working on in some of our code sets here. Um, I like to keep my hands in some of our uh, platforms. I've been rewriting some stuff with the team. And it's something that's super cool. It involves some of new AWS services that we're just announced at reInvent. And on that note, Tom and Craig, did you guys see some of the announcements yesterday? It looks like AWS announced the uh, central firewall or AWS firewall service. And then you have to actually be, you have to pay a premium for that, I believe, which what it does is it manages your WAF rules, web application firewall, as well as your uh, security group rules across regions and accounts based off of application it's on. And then they also announced what I actually think is super cool. I'm going to dive into this a little bit more, and I know our engineering team is already on it, but AWS Secrets Manager. Is that right, Tom? I, I believe that's the name of it, yes. So, you know, I think in light of some of the security issues that have been happening around the world, uh, they've decided to release their own sort of, you know, or their own security service when it comes to storing passwords and things like that. So I have not really dove into it. But I'm really curious to, to learn about that and the, the new firewall service to see how it's going to apply to um, all the content that we currently have, new courses that we're putting together. Uh, so again, with AWS, it's like you know every day there seems to be new announcements, and new features, and it's uh, it, it's never never boring when these things come out and uh, all, all the research and things that we need to do to keep up with it. So um, yeah, I, I really look forward to diving more into those services and, and learning as much as we can. Absolutely. That secrets manager, it, one of the things that I, I kind of see AWS doing uh, as part of their services and how it works is what they're now doing is they're kind of saying, all right, out of all of these services that we have, how can we tie together Lambda and some of the event mechanisms that are in there to create a new service? So now you have service for managing automation between services. And if you look at, you know, for example, guard duty, that is a service that is in, enabled by other services. You have uh, I, I believe it's CloudTrail and flow logs and VPC that really make up a lot of that. Um, and there's a lot of cool automation that can be gone in there. And I was looking at the secrets. It ties into Lambda quite a bit in terms of managing secrets. There's a lot of flexibility. So it'll be interesting to see. And as we go through, real quick, we're going to do a quick wrap up of what we did yesterday. We're going to talk a little bit about what's coming tomorrow, except we're not going to tell you anything about it. And so on Monday, we had our office tour. All this stuff is available on youtube and on tuesday we had matt with us and he launched the google cloud security essentials course on wednesday we had joseph lowry who launched the google app engine deep dive on today we had craig and he announced the aws im deep dive we also announced the introduction to im learning activity hands-on lab and Friday, we have Fernando joining us, and it may be, Tom, it may be serverless related. 
on AWS? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to make an appearance. What's that? I said, I'll be sure to make an appearance. You'll be sure to make it, yeah. Be sure to make it. So we'll have Tom and uh, Fernando with us. And I don't know, do we have anything else on this? We have one more thing. I'm going to try to click on here to show you. So we're going to start doing a little bit of a recap. Um, it looks like we haven't announced very much. So in the realm of things, we've already this week alone announced three courses and a new hands-on lab. All of these are placeholders for all of the things that we're launching this month. We want to take this month to create a little bit of a relationship with our community, right? We want to answer questions. We want to give away swag. We have a lot of people on a daily basis actually asking if they can buy swag. We want to make sure that we create opportunities to give a whole bunch of it away. But most importantly, I like to ask the community for the first time ever, if you could celebrate with our course authors, even if you just send them a congratulations or post something in the Linux Academy community, whether you share their work or tweet them or something, it doesn't matter. If you could just celebrate with them how we celebrate with you when you pass certifications in the community, I'd really appreciate it. And the reason I say that is there's a lot of work that goes into it. I, I wish I could emphasize how hard sometimes it is actually at this phase of a company and, and being able to handle all the student requests that come in and design a process and platform that actually allows us to handle every time we launch a new course, you guys, our community, come up with a thousand new other things you want from that, which is amazing. And I will say that whether it's right or wrong, our entire mission is to be able to do all the stuff you want us to do. And that's, that's our mission. And we want to do it for your success. And we have that as our measurement of success. Our student success is a measurement of our success. We have these dashboards. So whether you're going through, you know, let's say you upvote his course or something inside of there. Just say, hey, you know, upvote his course, do something. And nobody really sees that right now. That's internal information, but it helps out, right? You know, congratulate, say something. Uh, you know, nice, celebrate with our course authors. That's the only thing I ask, is there's a lot going on, there's a lot of change, and we wanna celebrate with our student success, but we wanna celebrate with our team, too. And, uh, you know, we might bring some, start having some engineering interviews and stuff like that as well, uh, so we can celebrate with all of the team across Linux Academy. Uh, we have 90 plus people that work their butts off for our students right now, and so much amazing stuff is going on. In fact, we browse down in the chat real quick, make sure I don't miss anything. I don't know if I'll be able to see it, uh, but tomorrow join us for that. Feel free to tweet us, hashtag, I just, I just air signed a hashtag, I did that. Oh, this live show is going downhill pretty quick. Um, hashtag Ask Linux Academy, and thank you everybody for watching, and we are going to cut off, and I'll see you tomorrow. What time, Winnie? 11 a.m. At 11 a.m. Central Standard Time, Friday. See you then.